Woohoo. All right. I think we're live. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> so so i mean we're gonna we're gonna pretend that we are live um hi everybody so i'm rachel and i'm steven <laughs> we're the faint divinities <laughs> uh so we are a small group of nerdy friends that are here to play dagger heart together which is a new tabletop role-playing game from critical role and darrington press that is currently in open beta uh, today we're going to be running our session zero, so we're finally here at the actual start of stuff. Um, remember that a session zero, if you're new to tabletop role-playing games, is a session run before the actual campaign begins to introduce the players to each other, set ground rules and safety tools in place, uh, and build characters. So that's where we're going to go from here. Uh, today, I am joined by new folks that you are seeing for the first time in stream. Uh, so we're going to go around and everybody can briefly introduce themselves. I've already said it, but I am Rachel. I've been playing and GMing tabletop RPG and specifically uh, Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition for almost a decade. Uh, and I'm going to turn it over to my co-pilot. Uh, yeah. I'm Steven. Um, I have also been playing and GMing for about 10 years now, um, mainly with 5th edition D&D, but uh, I do a lot of the, the video games as well. Um, and then moving on to Kayla. Hi, I'm Kayla. I'm a housewife. Uh, I've never played any kind of tabletop um, RPG before, and my favorite cereal is Frosted Flakes. <laughs> That's gonna be hard to follow up. I'm Chris. Uh, I've never played a tabletop either. Nice to meet everybody. And to Justin. Uh, hi, uh, Justin. I've like Stephen, uh, Rachel. I've been played with them for years at this point. And I've been playing myself for a little over ten. Uh, just wrapped up a three and a half year long campaign. So super stoked about that. Uh, a lot of fun. But yeah, ready to learn how to play some Daggerheart. Right up on the rules. Super excited. Uh, I guess outside of this, uh, I'm working video games myself. Uh, that's me. It's so exciting. Hi, everybody. We finally did it. We're finally here. It's been a very long time coming. I'm very excited. <laughs> All right, um, so we are going to dive right in today. Uh, the first thing that we are going to talk about is what a session zero is, which I have introduced before. It's really just a way to make sure that you are really vibing with the people that you're going to play and that you're engaging in play and a game that you're both interested in. You know, nobody's fun is wrong. Um, everybody has a different kind of style, but I personally don't love a murder hobo campaign. And again, nobody's fun is wrong, but especially as the GM, I want to make sure that players that I'm playing with aren't just going to kill the lovingly crafted NPCs that I have. Um, and a session zero, that's a lot of what it is. It's feeling each other out. Uh, it's trying to test what safety tools you have in place and really go from there. So I am going to uh, kind of introduce a lot of this from the perspective of the Darrington Press's Dagger Heart system because they have put a specific emphasis on this. You know, they've talked about having the session zero, which again, I know that this is going to ruffle some feathers. Some people in tabletop RPG really are averse to those. Um, if you feel like you want a session zero, then definitely reserve yourself for a table that's willing to do that because it's just a good prompt. Not everybody wants to sit down at a table where you're they are playing Game of Thrones and you are Sansa Stark. Protect yourself. Don't be Sansa Stark. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but one of the first topics that we're going to introduce is the concept of lines and veils. So lines and veils were first developed by Ron Edwards. You can see that on the screen. I think it's really nice that the Darrington Press Group took the time to actually draw attention to who did these kinds of items. Um, and this was specifically an item that sets the tone and goals for the game. So lines are topics that players don't want in the game. I've already heard some debate around this from people, people who are like, oh, this example, if you're if you are afraid of spiders, then you shouldn't even play tabletop RPG. I number one, don't agree with that criticism. But more importantly, this is an example. There are more 
critical issues at stake when you sit down to play a game. And for example, we're not going to talk about ours today. We trust each other. We're friends. We will talk about that stuff off stream together. Um, but something that's important that you might want to say is a hard line for yourself at table is something like, sexual violence, for example, you know, again, that's something that happens in Game of Thrones. Um, it's nobody's fun is wrong. I've enjoyed that. I don't want to sit at a table that does that. The next item is veils. So veils are not items that are strong lines. They probably exist in the world, but they're not going to feature into your game specifically. Um, and again, in this case, the example is spiders. And in this case, there can be spiders in the world, you know, an Aragog for sure, but it's not something that you're actually going to fight. You're not going to have to be worried about coming into a den with something that's going to trigger your arachnophobia. In my case, and again, this is just one example, gratuitous torture. That's something that I, I am okay with existing in the world of the game that I'm playing, but I don't really want to... If somebody at my table starts talking about implements and tools that they're using for torture, I'm probably ready to go. Um, so, and, and again, that's something that has happened at tables that I've been at. So these are the first key concepts when you're running a session zero is to make sure that everybody is comfortable. Um, the next one that they've introduced, and again, this was created by John Stavropoulos, is the X card. So basically... There's not a way for every player to say confidently, these are all the items that I don't want to occur at the table. So if at any point in the play you really are uncomfortable, it's just setting up a mechanic so that you can communicate safely to the group, not comfortable with this, and we can move on. So with my players, we all know that that's something that we can do. And the last one is the open door policy. Um, if at any point someone has to go, there's an emergency or something, or again, you're not comfortable with it. It's letting everybody know you're not gonna be punished. I'm not gonna, as you exit the room to go deal with an emergency, say, well, his character dies. Uh, because again, some GMs, and it depends on the system that you're playing, but sometimes there's an adversarial effect, I would say, in tabletop RPG, and that's not the game that I'm looking to have. Um, but those are all of, I wanted to get through that very quickly. I really don't want to focus necessarily on a lot of that, but I thought that it was important, and especially since the Darrington Press people had included it, I figured we'd go through it. Players at table, are there any questions, concerns, things that we need to talk about before we move on to character building? Uh, I no, I think it's super dope, super good for like new people trying to come in and play with, you know, an unfamiliar group, I guess. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so then we are going to move straight through now into the meat of what we're talking about today, which is going to be character building. Um, so I do want to note that you can build characters in any order that you want. Um I see everybody in chat and hi everybody again. It's so nice to see everybody. I love you all. Um, but you can build a character in any order that you want. That said, uh, I really do like that as part of the materials that Darrington Press has published, they have included a lot of items for helping you get started. And this is, for example, a step-by-step -step how to create a character we're gonna follow that as a rubric just to make it easier for ourselves. Um, and we're going to start to by noting that uh, you can work in Demiplane, which again is kind of the online system for this. Um, a lot of us are going to be building on paper just because it's a really good way for you to learn the mechanics. Those of you who are familiar with Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, this might look pretty familiar to you, but I think that it's important to note, and I'm going to be sharing this on screen a little bit later. I think that it is important to note, however, that one of the big differences between this and Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition is that your character sheets are specific to your class. So you can't just grab one of the templates and build any character. For example, in this character sheet that I'm showing, it is specific to the Seraph class. And there are items in here, although you might not be able to see it very well, that specify things like your hit point thresholds or your uh, specific class feature. So just 
be aware of that. That really is why in this system they're suggesting that you determine your class first. So that's it for that specific thing. Let's talk about with the group. I mean, there are a lot of really great classes in here. A lot of the standards that we know, like a bard, a druid, a ranger, a rogue. What classes are you guys thinking for your characters? Under the fun stuff. Don't everybody go at once. (laughs) (laughs) I suppose I'll go. Um, I'm thinking of a warrior call of the brave. I want to do an agility guy that's like hard to hit and like evasive. Yeah, so a warrior is actually a new class. And, you know, anybody, Steven and Justin, I know that y'all know a lot about this too. Feel free to jump in at any point. But a warrior does not exist in Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. I would say the most comparable class to it is a fighter. Um, whereas the other real melee class is a guardian, um, and a guardian class specifically is more of like your tank. They're front and center, big beefy guys taking damage and stuff. Um, I also have taken the liberty of really cool, this game does introduce cards and stuff, and I've printed them all out. So um, Chris has chosen warrior so there's like a stack of warrior cards in this game and you said uh so there are two subclasses in this there is the call of the slayer and call of the brave which one did you decide on uh call of the brave all right so that one looks dogs are with me yes yeah no problem (laughs) the call of the brave do you want to tell us what that one does i know that it's going to be tiny on here but if you can read it separately Do you have it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have it either. No. What does it do exactly? Right, um, I can take this. That's so, a good question. The call Great of, question. The Call of the Brave, specifically when you fail a roll with fear, you're going to gain a hope, which is an awesome mechanic because you're going to be rolling with fear or hope 50% of the time. This ensures that basically any roll that you're making, you're gaining hope, which is pretty awesome. Um, Also, once per long rest before you attempt something incredibly dangerous or face off against a foe who clearly outmatches you, you're going to describe what ritual you perform or prepare uh, to clear two stress and gain two hope. So you're really cashing in on a lot of those like little tokens that are going to allow you to optimize skills, really drive through that kind of stuff. So very exciting. Love it. Love it. (laughs) Yet. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) What about Kayla? I'm very excited for yours. I'm trying to pull up um, the subclass so that I can read it for you. It's not going to happen. So, but anyways, my character, um, is gonna be a bard and she is gonna play a banjo. She's a little frog girl, so she's like, you know, a little redneck Cajun frog. Let me go ahead and and as people are like talking about theirs, I will go ahead and pull up their specific uh, class sheets so that we can look at those a little bit closer. Oh my God, wait, I think I did find it. It's the (gasps) Troubadour one. That's right, yes. Foundation, describe the unique instrument you carry and add it to your inventory. You may perform each song once per long rest. Um, When you play a relaxing song during a moment of calm, you and any close allies heal one hit point. When you play an epic song during a battle, make a target temporarily vulnerable. And then when you play a heartbreaking song at any point, you can choose you and any close allies take hope. So that's what that one does. Yeah, I, I'm very excited about the the bard in this one. Um, I know that we've already talked about some of the mechanics, but it's very exciting. And your spell casting uh, is presence. It's probably a good time to note that I had already mentioned the character sheets are class specific. And if you open them, they're hefty. They're like 19 page documents. But a lot of that is because, at least for this, and I assume that in the book it's going to be different, but at least for this, as part of the character sheets, if you go down past other options, you can see things that you can take, including, in this case, your subclass. So that's where this one is. So yeah, 
very, very exciting. Uh, and I'm showing that on the screen now, so I don't think I need to hold up the cards or anything. But mm -hmm. Justin, what about you? What are you thinking of for uh, your class? For myself, and uh, I'm trying to take it, you know, step at a time, leave y'all leave waiting. But uh, leaning right. towards uh, Rogue at the, at the moment. Uh, more specifically, uh, one of the uh, got the two different subclasses, Nightwalker and Syndicate. For like what I'm planning to kind of build out is uh, kind of going more the Syndicate route, um, which you know, familiar with the Nightwalker one, it's a lot more you know hiding in the shadows, a little more stealthy, um, you know, kind of dipping into one shadow, popping out somewhere else. Um, but for the Syndicate, uh, it's more about just kind of who you know in different towns and stuff or different areas. Um, yeah. That's what I'm leaning towards at the moment. Uh, their spell casting fo or spell cast uh, trait is finesse, but that will not be one I'm heavily leaning into, <laughs> uh, despite going rogue. <laughs> uh, for those that are, have played with me, know I'm not necessarily min maxer when I'm making my characters. I'm more of the opposite, you know, that, that max minning, make a terrible build, but make it the best you can. A lot of fun that way. <laughs> Very much fun. I think that my, you know, I've seen you play a dexterity based barbarian before, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I've played many of everything. Yeah. Some, you know, like my, the one y'all always reference is uh, Average Joe, just, you know, with D, 5e D&D, &D, 10 stats across the board. <laughs> Average guy. He was the best. I loved him so much. I miss him dearly. <laughs> like, I'm terribly. Very, very good guy. <laughs> and Steven, what about you? You're the last but not least. Um, I was going to play a uh, ranger, a mm. beast bound ranger. <gasps> Um, and Sick. they get a ally, a companion, a companion that they play, get to play with. Uh, so and it says I'll have to work with you. So I got some ideas already in mind. So uh, we'll talk about it as we go through this. Um, but as I level up, it, the my companion will level up, and then. Uh, When uh, an enemy attacks um, me while I'm in melee or my companion, it ga uh, you gain plus two evasion against the attack. Ooh. Which is super nice. And then once per long rest, if you or your companion are within close range of each other, when the damage from an attack would take you or your companion out of the fight, you may immediately rush to their side and take that damage instead. Wow, that's cool. I think the ranger also, I mean, we'll get into that later, but I think they had some healing possibilities, right? Mm-hmm, yeah, they, they uh, with the um, different types of cards you can take, their sage, you can get some healing in sage. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I am. Um, I'm interested to see how, because we've talked about this before, but I'm interested to see how their beast bound specific subclass works because in Dungeons and Dragons fifth edition, this is a big topic of discussion very frequently is that, um, the initial rules is written, uh, beast master in dungeons and drag fifth edition didn't work it didn't scale well at all it did not no yeah their their beast companion died pretty frequently as soon as um you hit like level six basically every session um they fixed that again in unearth arcana which was great but i'm excited to see how this does have you decided what kind of beast friend you might have or are we talking about uh, that later we can talk about it later. Uh, I, I, I have something in mind um, already. Are you going to ride it? No kidding. Like, no, 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 the giraffe. No. Cool. Okay. Well, all right. So that's a very exciting group. So we have a little bit of everything. I mean, it sounds like we are pretty fightsy we're we're a, a melee class we've got so far a warrior we have a ranger and a rogue and a bard this is a classic group mm -hmm. i'm very excited to see how it works out nobody also nobody picked like one of the really magical classes like wizard or sorcerer but i mean i guess technically kayla's is a little bit but um but that's bard the bard and uh, ranger are going to be our spellcasters. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
pack heels, very many health potions at those little vendors that show up in the forests and video games next to safe points. So, okay, cool. All right. So the next piece in the character build option, and Kayla's already talked about this a little bit, but is going to be developing the heritage. So in a, in this specific game in Daggerheart, the heritage is made up of two components. And again, this is going to be pretty familiar. Sorry, I'm scrolling so much. Um, but this is going to be pretty familiar to people, again, coming over for, from Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. In D&D 5e, you pick a race and a background. So you might be, for example, a dwarf, and your background might be artisan. You were trained to make clay pots and stuff or, or be an instrumentalist or something. Similarly in this, you have ancestry and then you have your community. They're a little bit different. I really like the way that this game said specifically for ancestry that uh, it's pulling away from that race specific stuff. And the materials say that you might have multiple ancestries in your lineage, um, but there are a number of specific ancestries that are available i think it's like it's something like 18 so you have very briefly go through these clank which is an automaton robot uh ribbit which is the frog race it is very quickly the fan favorite of everybody you have a demon uh, ancestry which is kind of like your tieflings uh, our uh, yeah. our logo uh made by a good friend of mine jocelyn is a uh, ribbit it a, is. Cute. Thank you, Jocelyn. It's Jocelyn. very beautiful. Um, and it's everywhere at this point. So if you guys have noticed that change like within the last 24 hours, it's because it was finished and I got very excited and uploaded it everywhere. So it's there. Um, then you have some more standard ones. You have like dwarf, giant, elf, uh, human, orc, halflings. So they're specifically the smaller race. Um, there aren't really gnomes in this. You have a Dracona instead of a Dragonborn. That one has a breath weapon still, so some of these are normal. Katari is the first one that I do want to talk about a little bit just so that people know because I already see people that are getting frustrated by this because they were like, no, the cat race is cat boy um, instead of being like Khajiit. Um the manuscript specifically says that you should do whatever you want. So if you want to play a Katari that is more so a Khajiit than they are a Nico Jin or whatever, you can. You absolutely can. So don't get tied into the way that these look on the cards. I think they look great. Um Sim, yeah, Sim, yeah. Chris was uh, was bummed a I little bit. I was not in that one. I was like, yeah. that one's not it. Yeah. <laughs> but the Khajiit. Yeah, he saw some of the character art for the um, the quick play adventure where it was a Khajiit, and he was like, oh, "Like you could be a tiger." And like so, um, definitely just gonna mimic one of the characters from uh, He Man. Yeah, <laughs> just Thundercats <laughs> vibes. I really want someone to play a Katari because they've said it's so loosey goosey. I want someone to play a Katari that is just a cat, a Puss in Boots character. Yeah, would very wow. much like to see it. I almost went with that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then similarly, a fairy. So they had an interesting take in this one is that the only thing that all fairies have in common is their wings. Um, but m they did lean into if you choose to be a fairy, you might choose to take insect qualities. So you might have mandibles or what's a proboscis? Antennae. <laughs> like you might have some of those things that insects might have. You could look like a praying mantis. But again, you don't have to. You can look like a traditional fairy. There's a lot of beautiful art in the manuscript of fairies. Um, and size-wise, the world is your oyster, it seems like. Um, so there's not a lot there. Uh, that, I think, is where that is the most important discussion because everything else is pretty more normal. But it all applies everywhere. You do have a fawn, which is kind of a goat type of race. That's a satyr type of person. Uh, the Galapas are turtle people. You have goblins. I love their ears. I want everyone to play that kind of goblin. One of the other big and highly loved 
ancestries in this is the fun grill. Now, this art is hard to see because of the watermark that they've put over it, but it it's is—it's so dope. It's so cool. It's mushroom he's, people. He's just a fun guy. He's just a fun yeah. guy. He's just a sneaky little mushroom. <laughs> so he's uh well, this one's not a sneaky little mushroom, but um, but the the fungus people, kind of like myconoids, uh, very exciting. Love the art for it. Um, that. Their specific skill, because all of these ancestries have specific things that they can do. I read through the always connected thing at first, and I wasn't really excited. And then I began to think that in this kind of a game, where it is so role play heavy, this is probably overpowered. We will see. But like, you could talk to the whole colony wherever you are. So, um, the last two are Fearbulg, so this is one that is common uh, and is in Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. They're cow people. Uh, they're they're, they're, I love that they just straight up changed it to cow people. They're just like, mm, they're just like they're cow know, people. They're cow people. Look at how cute he is. I love him. And I love his, like, their specific ancestry trait is natural calm. Whenever yeah. you should mark a stress, you roll a d6, and on a six, you take no stress. Sick. Just like, no, sick. You get to roll a lot. Good. They definitely lean heavy into. Don't worry about it, brother. Yeah. They definitely lean yeah. heavy into the critical role references. Oh, one hundred percent. Oh yes. Yeah. What was his name? He was the shopkeeper. He had the uh, duplicates. We had him, and they also had the uh, character in the party. Yeah, the Midwestern guy. Caduceus was in the party, yeah. right? Yeah. Caduceus but I was. Clay. Caduceus Clay, but I keep, I always think of that like shopkeeper though. I just can't remember his name. I loved him. He had duplicates and that was sick. Um, uh, and the last race is the Simia from Simeon. It is a monkey race. Again, the watermark makes this a little bit difficult to see, but he's, I think this might be like a capuchin or something. He's so cute. I love him so much. And you can be again, any kind of monkey or a simian or ape. So you could pick an orangutan, you could pick a gorilla, um, you could pick a human. Just kidding. That's a race, an ancestry all on its own. Um, but very exciting ancestries, all with great skills and things that they can do. I love the ribbit so much. The and fawns are cool too. The fawns are cool. They get that headbutt. The headbutt. Yeah, the headbutt's pretty dope. Without talking about and which ones. Pretty. It's so pretty. Look at her ribbons. Oh yeah. my God. Um, if you could, I was curious, what were the abilities on the ribbit again? I'm curious because like there's like if a lot of this is pulling some aspects from d and I'm curious if they pulled much from the... Uh, uh, the Grung from D and D. He's a like, lucky boy. Like... <laughs> yeah, lucky boy. Oh, his like, more about underwater um... too. Yeah. Yes, yeah. They they can breathe and move underwater just as easily on land. They are amphibious. They love the animal races. Uh huh. They have long tongue. You could use your long, powerful tongue to grab onto <laughs> things close to you. Super cool. That would be great if you're like a bound character at some point. But they would have to bind your face also. Um, and you can mark a stress. Animal lecture map. <laughs> yes, absolutely. 100%. <laughs> oh my God, so cute. Not cute, but I thought it was cute. Anyway, um, I may, thought it was cute. It's cute. Like it's you, you may also mark stress to unleash it as a finesse close weapon that does D12 physical damage. So less sexy than it sounds, you know. Um, but long tongue. That is the ribbit race. What other races did y'all? Without going into the ones y'all chose, were there any others that y'all really were excited about or wanted to look at or talk about? Um, I mean, I, I really, I like the, the, like, simple changes to some of the classic races, too. <clears throat> Changing up how the elves work, um, but, like, keeping, like, some of the, like, ideas from, like, other tabletop games. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I like my monster races still, so I love my goblins. The danger sense is awesome. I love the orcs. They have the sturdy, which is just like, let me just not have to use armor class slots, and I'll just be kicking ass. 
I want to build the character Elise that I think both Steven uh-huh. and Justin have played with. She was my war cleric. I want to build her in this as an orc because unstoppable and sturdy are so like synonymous to me. This is so great. When you should mark an armor slot, roll a D6 on a five or a six. So like 30% of the time you don't mark the armor slot, but you still reduce the incoming damage. Sick. So exciting. But, um, but yeah. Um, also this elf is just straight up shadow heart. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> we all agree, right? That's shadow heart. So it's unfortunate that like any uh, elf with the dark hair and bangs now becomes shadow heart. Um, true though. AKA best girl. Best, best, like yeah. I, I reclassed her as a, she did not a, like a, that. a life cleric, but uh, she, was, she was real good after that. She was a romanceable option for me until she turned me down after I saved someone else that is a spoiler that she did. And, and I, and now I will, I can, she can never be a part of my adventuring party. I refuse to have her. I blame the multiplayer on her. It's not I, her fault. I do blame her. I don't. She, I blame she, her too. It's on site. She's thanks. never in my party. She's out. Mm-hmm. Plus, Sorry. she steals all of the men because she's the most romanceable female. I'm done hearing y'all talk about her. No, it's shouty heart. Am I right? <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> He's tricked. Uh, all right. So we've talked about the ancestries, but what are you guys choosing? I'm going to be a fairy. <laughs> really? Yes. Absolute, muscular, glistening, a man or a woman? beautiful male fairy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm curious, like, what, what, what height are you going with? Are you yeah, literally bug size? Yeah, he's going to go, Can like... Well, the Four fairies are, are, are two to five feet, I think, is what it says in the, the player descriptions. Okay. It could be like about ribbit size. Oh, okay. All His right. muscles are going to be... Kickable height. Okay. You know. Kickable height, indeed. <laughs> so we're working are you planning with... on kicking a lot of fairies? I never know. I mean, listen... Yeah. I mean, if there's a goblin in the way, I'll punt the, I'll punt the goblin. <laughs> <laughs> We're working with an artist who is in chat right now, Bugaloo, and um, she is incredible and a close friend and family of the channel. Um, And she has already worked on this fairy. And when I say muscles, I mean, he's wild. Um, I'm very excited about this character, so... All right, um, Kayla, I know that you have yours picked out. Do you want to talk about your sweet little baby? Yeah, um, so I, it's a ribbit, and then are we doing the heritage? Because I picked the highborn, because well, she's like a swamp. She's a lady of the swamp. <laughs> we'll talk about the highborn in a second, but that's totally mm-hmm. fine. Yeah, you're doing, mm-hmm. you're doing a ribbit okay, character. She's- yeah, she's um she's like based on a strawberry poison dart frog, but I made her a little more pink. But it just means that you know she's a reddish pink color, and then she's got blue hands and feet. I was thinking like three and a half feet tall because I wanted her to be tiny and cute and everything like that. So she got eyes that go a little crazy in opposite directions. She's a little derpy, but <laughs> a little ribbit bard, you guys. She's. I think that all of us have actually seen the character again that Bugaloo in chat has done for her, and I am obsessed. If y'all want to join the Discord to get a sneak peek at her before like next week's session, she is the cutest bug. You are amazing. It's wild. Um, I'm very excited for this little ribbit. Also, the ribbit is my absolute favorite class. I am very much with the people of of the world that the ribbits are supreme ancestry, which maybe is not okay, but I love them. No way. <laughs> All right, um, Justin, do you have? Are you? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. So for so y'all you know, already said are going rogue. Uh, so you know, classic rogue race or uh her- her- ancestry for this uh, dwarf definitely you know, I love barge it. into places with my hammer i'm telling you i'm being stealthy you know i'm very excited because <laughs> it seems like we're all a short party so far i mean i'm a, I'm a strong four or nine love that uh, for you okay okay towering over the rest four of nine us. king <laughs> here we go 
Um, and then uh, I'm going to roll it in with uh, another small character. I'm going to be a Simia. I'm going to be a monkey. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna Let's be go. One of the, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the monkeys that sit in the hot springs with the big red faces and the like white. And they're just like, oh, oh, I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about. Hell yeah. Ronnie looks so sick as a unit. <laughs> i cannot wait like and and again for anybody watching this i promise that we're commissioning this artist we're not making her do free labor for us for the most part like but um i really now that i know all of y'all are small guys i want the character <laughs> art so bad of the group just all teenies mm -hmm. it's like the muppet babies just having us walk up to a bar you just see like the tops of our foreheads <laughs> yeah yeah, y'all are the um the hobbits like before leaving Stillben. <laughs> like so excited. No, and I've I have put two worlds together in my brain there. Yep. I'm so sorry. It's fine. Don't even worry about it. We're gonna move on. So <laughs> All right, so that is one half of the heritage is the ancestry and the other part is the community. So we're gonna go ahead and get down in the pages. So the community is the, have I got, yeah, it's, it's way less options. So I scrolled right past it, but the community is um, not necessarily where you were born and raised, though probably that's gonna be a lot of people's. Um, it's could be that, but it also could be the thing that shaped you the most. Oh my God. Like people are losing, y'all are being crazy in chat. Um, <laughs> like, I like keep looking over because I can see y'all laughing. I like, can't look away. Like, it's hard to, I'm trying not to watch it. I'm trying to not pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. I'm not responding. I'm not giving him anything. The uh, <laughs> gene screen in chat, give that dwarf some heels is like, like yes, please. <laughs> Doctor Scholl's inserts. We need. <laughs> Let's go. Um, but back to the community. It it doesn't necessarily need to be where you were born. It could also be um the thing that you was most impactful to you. So like if you were a person who were born in farmland sure then that could is where you're born but maybe moving to the city you found your people you became part of that or maybe going off to school and university you really dug in so the options for that and again remember that all of these are cards which yes i did print out all of them and it's just so exciting um the but all of these as well the way that you're meant to do it is to it's, have yeah. the cards oh it. It's gonna be so much fun to play this like in person with some people, like get a get a table together and like have the cards because it's gonna be like a good like tabletop RPG. But you have cards, like having cards is just fun to have. Some people are very upset about it. I don't know what's wrong with them. I like things. Um. Anyway, mm -hmm. um. So the options for this are highborn, which are gonna be um aristocracy nobles people that have money of any kind uh and again just like with your ancestry each one of these are going to come with a thing that you can do so for example with highborn you have inheritance so you're a hoity-toity uh you have advantage on any roles you make when consorting with nobles negotiating prices gonna be sick for those health potions and stamina potions or leveraging your reputation to get what you want you also get to take an extra handful of gold at character creation which is very exciting um so that's an example. We're not going to go through each one of those, but you have Ridgeborn, kind of hardy people that are from the mountains. Seaborn, OP, with that extra action at a short or long rest. So great. So Your professional lounging. <laughs> oh my God, that's so good. You're so good at rest. Yeah, I love that. You're so good at rest. It's just, yeah, absolutely. So you, you're unflappable, yeah. you know? Um, then you have the underborn. So this is uh, underground society specifically. So people from caves, um, systems, those kinds of things. Uh, wildborn. So community means you were raised by a clan deep within the forest. That art is so pretty. I love the art in this. Um, loreborn. So your scholars uh, in D&D &D mm -hmm. fifth edition, I think Sage was, what'd you say? That's a nerd. Absolute <laughs> yeah. nerd. That's, that's yeah. me. Like, like, 
Um, and then uh, you have Slyborn. So growing up in the underbelly of society, uh, surrounded by criminals and con artists. You have Wanderborn, so you're more nomadic. And then you have Orderborn. So being part of an Orderborn community means you were raised in a place of great discipline or faith and uphold a set of principles that reflect your experience there. So now we're going to be able to kind of put together a little bit more what each one of these characters are. And I think we could go in the same order that we went in before. So Chris, you have a fairy warrior. Where is he from? Um, so yeah, kind of like what you were saying. He's from the wild, but he more so identifies in his recent life as a wanderer. He part of uh, he has kind of carny vibes because he's kind of like a muscle strong man. And I'm gonna use that nomadic pack because my guy is an aspiring tooth fairy, and uh, that's where what? I hold my teeth. But so you're gonna be stealing okay. teeth. <laughs> God. Absolutely. <laughs> when, you punch, when you like rear up and punch someone at the end of the fight, he's going around like picking teeth up off the ground. Yeah, his name is Tank Mollerson, and his oh. friends call him Tanker Bell. Oh Son no, I love it. <laughs> really good. That's really good. Was, so he gets around, you know. He's so he's uh, he's wandering like out there. Serial killer trophies. I know he's not a serial killer, but it's like his trophies. Okay. I heard yeah, this, yeah. and I was like. Kayla's gonna love this. She, this yeah, I do. I love it a lot. <laughs> I'm a little, I'm low key jealous. You came up with it. It's a really good idea. <laughs> you went so soft and sweet for this one, and our sweet mm. boy Chris was like, "Time to break out the, mm -hmm. the crazy." Mm -hmm. So he's. I had to channel it. I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm gonna have to get better next time, I guess. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, but let's. It's gonna be. Go ahead. You're gonna be a great foil. You know, we'll we'll bounce okay. off each other. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I, I think y'all are all going to be so cute together. I also love that it's like a frog, a monkey, a fairy, and a dwarf. <laughs> y'all so are going to be able to it do four like a, guys a in a joke, trench coat. Like and walk into a bar. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Halflings in a trench coat vibes all the way around. Um, the Shrek swamp. <laughs> yeah. All right, Kayla, you've already mentioned, but yours, do you want to talk about her a little bit? Yeah, okay, so um, her name is Anura, um, and she is a highborn frog, but she is the spare. So her sister is going to inherit the little swamp kingdom, and that's why she can be kind of wild and, you know, roam around and be a bard. So that's what I got on her. That's sick. I love that so much, and she's just so cute. Her little, mm -hmm. I love her. I, again, we've seen the character art already, and the like off center eyes are just perfect. that way. Where is oh. she looking? Nobody knows. And as a bard, what instrument is she playing? A banjo. <laughs> a little Louisiana Asian. frog. <laughs> so cute. I'm so excited, you guys. <laughs> okay, Justin. So we have a dwarven rogue from you. Where is he from? So actually, I'm I'm still I'm fifty fifty between two of the options. I've kind of settled on one, but would be curious y'all's thoughts on it. I'm flipping between Ridgeborn and Underborn. Uh, my kind of thought for my, uh, this dwarf is named Jimbo with the G. Um, he's kind of from an under mountain, like kind of like underground community where a lot more mining. So that's where I'm kind of leaning more towards the Underborn, typically in the dark, used to that. But at the same time, like living underground, you know, doing a lot of mining. Uh, digging around on cliff's edge, basically underground. That's where I like kind of get the idea of Ridgeborn and how I've kind of already described him as like a brutish uh, rogue opposed to, you know, sly, stabby rogue. Uh, we'll be curious y'all's thoughts between the two. So like Ridgeborn, a little more kind of, a little more tanky, uh, you know, a little more survivalist dealing with nature. Ledges, cliffs still make sense for underground. Uh, compared to Underborn, kind of more of the roguish side, uh, you know, dealing with the darkness, Stealthing around. Uh, would be curious y'all's thoughts there. I like. Well, I think ridge both are part. awesome. Yeah. Um, I so uh, let's just go ahead and real fast before we talk about that. I am going to be a ridgeborn because I am a, oh. a, a hot spring oh, monkey. A monkey. So, yep. Yeah, from from the, from the little <laughs> mountainy hot springs. So um, we could be buds if you're a ridgeborn, maybe. Friends. 
Maybe we could be acquaintances <laughs> ahead of time. Okay. Ridge Bros. Ridge Bros. Yeah. yeah. Love to see it. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, we can, we can both go Ridge. Uh, be Ridge Bros. Maybe I was under the same mountain you were on top of. Yeah. And, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're traded. Yeah. We're traders. You know. <laughs> He's the dwarf. Have rocks. The you have like... bananas. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's well, so like, cute. You can come soak in the springs if you give us things. <laughs> oh my god, the idea of like a little cl like colony or clan of simia that are just like specifically like you want a bath? What do you have? <laughs> like, we have oh my god. give rocks. <laughs> Shiny rocks and dull rocks. It makes me Shiny think rocks are good, dull rocks work good too. <laughs> Everybody here loves rocks. You know, we're all rock people. Like it's perfect. Those math rocks. <laughs> All right, that's so good. I'm so excited. Okay, so Thank then you. so then at this point, you know, kind of taking a step back because we are going to get a little bit more technical at this point. But remember that I've talked about these character sheets and scrolling back up to the top. If you are keeping a paper sheet at this point, you're going to want to start documenting some of this out. So, for example, you're gonna we're all starting at level one we are actually going to commit to playing this adventure in level one um i'm only slightly nervous that you'll all die um so level one and then uh you can because you have your heritage all functionally in place uh you can list you know as an example uh the ridgeborn dwarf for example or the wanderborn fairy and we have our class, which again, that's going to be on your sheet with your class feature down near the bottom. I'm going to scroll out so that people can see the full page. Here's the page and your class feature exists down in this lower corner. That's specifically what your class can do even before choosing a subclass. And then up here, you're going to be able to select and paste your specific subclass there so that you know what it is. Um, we're going to get back to the rest of this a little bit further as we go through, but that gets us at least foundations for our characters and it's going to influence how we proceed from here. So, so I think, um, now would be a fun time that I know we kind of already talked about some of the abilities of the different races, but maybe we can kind of, uh, tell each other what our, our races can actually do. Um, because I know mine and i know the ribbits because i've looked at those two but i haven't actually looked at the fairy or the dwarf like closely closely so uh as a simia um i get to take advantage on uh, agility rolls that would involve balancing and climbing and i add a plus one to my evasion on my character creation sheet I think that Chris almost took the Simia during character creation because he was trying to go for, um, at least at first, a heavy evasion because evasion mm. is seeming OP. It's, it yeah. seems like a really strong ability for sure. Yeah. So that plus one to character evasion is good. And remember that that is important. Be taking notes of where you're getting these increases because we're about to start actually putting numbers on your sheet of paper. So if you have a plus one to your evasion, you need to keep that in mind because that's actually going to matter in a second. Um, I also, uh, as a, a community, Ridge Boys or Ridge Bros here, um, we have <laughs> advanced on traversing da dangerous cliffs and ledges, navigating harsh environments, and survival knowledge. And we also get a plus one to our armor score. Yeah. So, yeah. Plus one to evasion and armor for you. Plus one at least to armor for you so far, Justin. Um, let's look at your dwarf real quick. I know that you probably already yeah. know, but... Yeah, for the dwarf, yeah, it's, uh, I can spend some hope to uh, take half damage, which... Yeah, I feel it could be helpful for me, especially if I'm going more of the roguish route, not really made to be a tank, but I'm going to put myself into that situation. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a bunch of little brick shit houses. <laughs> yep. Yeah, y'all have some hilarious builds that are happening so far. I'm very excited about them. All right. Um, and then, Chris, so you are the fairy. Do you want to talk about that specific one? 
Yeah, so that one, uh, you could engage flying, and then you mark a stress, or mark stress to take flight, and then until you roll with fear while flying, your invasion score increases by two. And then once per session, after you or an ally in close range marks an action roll, you can mark a stress to allow a re-roll of the duality dice. And then if you do, take the new result. And my class as well, um, I guess we'll go into it later, but the, uh, you know, the combo mechanic? I oh, get yeah. to do it with two hope instead of three hope. So oh, my little true. fairy guy, I plan on like getting a lot of cool special moves with you guys. What does your community do? You, which community did you take? Uh, the wander. The wander. wander. Oh, you get the the wandering pack, right? The... Yep. Yeah. For his teeth. For the yeah. teeth. <laughs> For the teeth. Very good. Right. Very That's important. Right. Can't, leave very important. Can't leave those behind. important. Can't leave them without him. It is cool, though, because the pack, this is... It's useful. Well, this is a game that is really trying to get yeah. out of the minutia of, do I have a candle? Yeah. And it's just like, yes, you probably have a candle. But yeah. in this case, it's taking it one step further. And you could be like, do I have needle nose pliers? And you'd be like, if you're Wanderborn, yes, you do. Because you have the nomadic pack, um, which is super cool. All right. Okay, and then Kayla, I think we talked about you, both of your things pretty fully, the ribbit and um, the highborn stuff, but do you have anything you wanted to add to that since we went around? I think we got it. Yeah, I think we got it covered. Okay. Yep. All right, cool. Very exciting. Okay, so returning back to our character creation, we are now, sorry, and I know that that is not super clear, but again, I will be sharing it up here. Um, we're at this point going to be setting our traits and evasion. So um, Stephen and I did talk about this a little bit last week during our GM talks. If you have anything that you want to look at, please, you know, feel free to look at that. But um for this, you have the six key traits. You have agility, strength, finesse, instinct, presence, and knowledge. Those are the basic ones. And you always have the same additions and subtractions you can put in place. I, I don't know if I want to call it a standard array because that's what it's referred to in Dungeons & Dragons, but that is what it is. So you have a negative one, two zeros, two plus ones and a plus two that you're going to put at, into some of these. One really cool thing about these character sheets is that if you go to the second page here, it gives you suggestions for your class specifically of where it would place those, but you don't have to. Um, the important thing it's to know- It's good for like new players especially. Or yes, me. I took it exactly <laughs> how they suggested me. it. Or yeah. like if you've never played a class before and you're not 100% sure like how it should be ran, yeah. it gives you a good idea of like, oh, this is a really heavy strength build. Like maybe when you're kind of planning out your character's background, why are they stronger? What did they do? Yeah, absolutely. But again, these are suggestions. You know, you definitely do want to be cognizant that whatever you're attacking with probably should be your highest one usually but outside of that the world really is your oyster you know um for example this one i think suggested that the presence which is kind of the more charisma stat and everything this one suggests that for a ranger it's a negative one if Steven, as a ranger, was like, no, I'm a charismatic little monkey, he might choose to move that to somewhere else. But you're gonna be placing these somewhere. So do we, do you guys have a pretty good idea of what y'all want to place everywhere? Do we want to spend some more time on this or are we okay? I got mine settled, okay. but we want to go someone that picked stuff that makes more sense first. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sure. <laughs> so, um, Kayla, you took standard, right? Are you going yeah. with that? Are you making any changes? Um, I feel like I'm just, because I'm new, so I'm like, you know what? This is how they suggested it the first round. This is how I'm going to play it. You know, I'll get creative later on down the line. I never get creative. I always do. No, sometimes I do, but it's pretty rare. I really mm. like the standard ones. They work. <laughs> like, so... Mm. What about you, Chris? Are you taking more of the standards? 
I went full standard, except they have the the warrior going minus one in presence. Mm -hmm. And I changed that to go plus one in presence. And then I used knowledge as the dump stat. Because my guy's kind of, um, he's, he's obsessed with beauty, of you know? <laughs> and he's got a bag full of teeth. <laughs> So it just seemed more right for him to be like a little more charismatic. I love that. That's so, uh, and that is a perfect example of how to like edit your specific character for what you want to play. You know, take the suggestions, but if you really want to move something out, you absolutely can. So, Steven, what about you for your ranger? So I follow the suggestions, except for pre uh, presence and knowledge as well. Uh, it was giving presence a minus one, like you said. Um, I just flopped it. I wanted my presence to be a flat zero and my knowledge to be a minus one. I, I love like it. He's a mountain boy. He doesn't really, they don't care. But they, what can you give me for my bath? <laughs> we are a charming but dumb group so far, guys. Wait, I have plus All one of my knowledge. Hell yeah, we've been a little bit. Right. Yeah. 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 And for Yeah. I was gonna say for mine, I like you know, they have their suggestions. The suggestions for a rogue, you know, plus one agility, negative something to strength, uh plus two to finesse, uh instinct, uh just leave it neutral, same with knowledge, but presence, increase it. I did none of that. Uh, <laughs> I got oh my god! I plus two it. to strength, uh, finesse. I just went with plus one, not the plus two they suggested. Plus one to instinct, and then I took the the negative to knowledge and just left uh, presence neutral. Uh, so you know, great rogue. Amazing. I'm only leaning into this, and I may have just missed a rule at some point. I'll learn that the hard way later. Because it seemed like for for this one, you don't have to have like say a finesse weapon to you know do sneak attack. It's just you spend your hope and you can sneak attack. So if I can just hit someone really hard with the hammer, really well, and great. Yeah, <laughs> dagger heart. <laughs> dagger heart is hilarious like that because it has taken all of those restrictions away. Like you could, there is nothing that says that a fairy that is chosen to be a tiny creature cannot have a warhammer because. As they said, they're like, well, it's magic that's allowing them to do stuff, you know? So, ball out, player, you know? <laughs> All right, cool. All right, so we have our traits. Now we have to talk about the evasion specifically. So, for this item, remember that in this game, your evasion is the thing that is getting rolled against to see if they hit. It's not your armor. Your armor is something else entirely, but evasion specifically is, are you or are you not going to get hit in this moment? Um, and the another, this is the character specific stuff. Each class sheet tells you what it starts as. So for the ranger, it starts as 10, but like we already learned for Steven, he got a plus, oh wait, was it to evasion or was it to agility? Mm, it is to evasion. Okay, so you get a plus one from your specific uh, ancestry background. So ancestry background, that does not, doesn't make any sense, but you get that plus one there. So yours is going to go to an 11, right? Correct. Okay. So that is how this is formulated. Um, you're going to start with whatever it is. Add anything that you have. Remember to write, if you are using a character sheet, you need a pencil and write lightly because you're going to be erasing. Once we get to armor and weapons, it could change again. But how's yeah, everybody's evasion weapons, looking? That could also change your evasion as well. Yeah, absolutely. How's everybody's evasion looking so far, by the way? Are we... My default, mine comes in at a 12, wow, which is nice. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Yeah, that's, I'm going to tank that with armor, don't worry. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kayla, how's Mine is a 9. I thought it was good until he said that. Still pretty good. Still pretty good. Not okay. bad. Chris? I uh, started at a 10. And Steven, we know yours is 11, so. That's correct. So I'm gonna have to bring some um, really good hits to this combat, or just target Kayla all of the time. Love that for me. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the bard. <laughs> so, okay. So we have the evasion. Now we're gonna set our thresholds and our hope. So talking about our hit points and stress. 
remember that this system and we're gonna learn it more as we're playing together but it's not a specific number you don't have like a hundred hit points instead it works i've heard this allegory from people it works more like in legend of zelda where you have hearts it's a smaller number of them and they get knocked down one by one especially depending on how hard you get hit you might lose a whole heart or three hearts that's a really great allegory for how this works um basically when an attack is going to happen they're going to roll against your evasion first if they pass that if they succeed that check then they're going to roll damage and depending on what range they hit, you're gonna take, sorry, one, two, or three hit points worth of damage. These boxes are gonna start out at these numbers on your class sheet. So for a ranger, it's gonna start at a four in this box, and then a nine in the middle, and a 14 at the highest. If I were to roll a 14 or above to for damage, then unless you do something to mitigate it, you're going to take severe damage, which is marking three hit points. One, two, three, get filled. And once you hit six, it's lights out. No, don't kill me! Shant, shant. Don't worry about it. It's going to be fine. Uh, you're not gonna, no one wants to beat the monkey. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Wait. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> We're not engaging with this. You got to be evasive, evasive maneuvers. So, so everybody's going to go ahead and mark their hit points. Um, and remember that you, for hope, you have five slots. You cap at five. You cannot have more than that at any given time. Anytime. Use it. Don't save it for nothing. Just use that shit. Any use chance you get. Any Show time. off. Yeah, absolutely. Use that stuff. Again, I have asked specifically for those tag team roles, and they use three. I'm going to need those to happen. <laughs> so, I'm going to be all over them. Yeah, yeah that's the, with Chris, they use two. Two. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to need that to happen. At the start of a campaign, I think, you get two hope. So go ahead and mark that you have two, um, and you'll we'll move forward. As you roll hope, you gain additional ones that's fueling your character actions and stuff. Um, okay, that takes care of the thresholds and hope. So now we are ready to choose starting weapons. So you do have an area here on your character sheet where you can note your weapons. And uh, it does have a handy little thing of are your hands full? So for this, the way that I've seen it is that you are able to pick both a primary starting weapon and a secondary starting weapon. If you have a spell casting modifier or a spell casting trait, so for example, the bard, I believe yours is the um, presence. You're right back. You're good. <laughs> then you can use, um, instead of one of these physical weapons, you can use one of these starting primary weapons. They all do have a name. So what it is specifically, zooming into these physical ones, you know, you have a lot of standards. You got a battle axe, you got a long sword. I am hearing a lot of feedback from the community that this is maybe one of the areas that could be most improved um, because things like a long sword doing a D8 of damage versus a short sword doing a D10 um, and being one-handed maybe is a question mark. But either way, um, we're gonna play it as written. It has the trait that it requires. So in the case of a battle axe, you don't want to choose this unless your strength is probably higher or you're just trying to have a fun time. That's okay too. But uh, you want to focus on that trait. It does tell you the range that you have to be in to hit. So melee means you have to be right there engaged um, all the way up to, if you look, you have things like a and, magic um, great staff question. is very far. Yeah. So uh, how do the traits play into that? So like... My biggest thing is agility, right? But if I want to take a finesse weapon, why would that be possibly a bad idea? Um, specifically, it's it's really up to you how you I want to do answer it. I can answer this. Okay. <laughs> um, Welcome back. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You um, summon. Uh, if so, say you are a agility-based character, you have a high agility, but you want to use a finesse-based weapon. 
really the only time I would say you probably don't want to use a weapon with a certain trait as- attached to it is if you have a negative associated to it. So in this game, unlike 5th edition where you eventually end up where you're like rolling plus 10, plus 15, plus, you know, huge numbers to your tax, they kept it relatively low and that might change at a higher uh, level, but I haven't gotten there yet, so I don't know. Um, but right now, like if you have like a zero or a one in finesse, even if your agility is a two, it's worth using if you like the weapon. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, this game is way more flexible. You are yeah. going to yeah. use that modifier for your roll. Um, mm-hmm. but again, it's not like you're getting a plus. Even in first level in D&D 5th edition, you're still adding like a plus four to a plus six. I'm right, right? It's usually in that kind of a range. This being a maximum of a plus two, even if you're using your plus one or your zero, it's not that different. Um, yeah, it's just even mm-hmm. like in higher levels from what I've seen, like you can get plus like, uh, you can get higher pluses and stuff, but it's just not to the same level as like what fifth edition was with how they plus things out and one other thing to keep in mind especially since i think y'all two are uh like are fairly new to like rpg games but you can flavor stuff however you want <laughs> like you can be using a warhammer but like say for mine i'm, I'm really i'm using a warhammer i may flavor it more to be a like a pickaxe kind of thing i'm still using it as a warhammer but just you know for my character it's a little more fitting for that going that route uh, yeah, anytime, uh, yeah. I, I do like cook characters a lot I, lo- I always have fun doing cook characters and like if they're using like a mace it's a meat tenderizer or like their <laughs> shield is a big cast iron like pot they have strapped to their own room. a skillet like, oh yeah <laughs> yes oh my god that's super cool yeah or like um you know if you wanted to use for example kayla as your primary weapon a great staff for whatever reason or uh i don't know what a, what a presence a scepter it could be a large flower for a bar for a little mm-hmm. ribbed person mm-hmm. anything you want you use the mechanic but you describe it however you want yeah i like what i did with the wanderer's bag the wanderer's yeah. bag? Yes, that's a fun it's bit. a tea bag, the tea bag. <laughs> Oh, yeah, exactly. It's all flavor. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Do flavor wherever you want. Same thing when we mm-hmm. get to the armor. You know, if you want to say that you're covered in corn husks, you can. I don't know why you would, but you could. <laughs> don't tip me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so um, I, I mean, also, like. So um, I had one more question. Um, the warrior, as I understand it, we can grab two primary weapons in each hand, yes. right? Yeah. Cool, cool. So, like, if you, uh, I was looking at it because I was looking at a lot of the classes and where it was one that I was looking at, um, you could do, like, a short sword in one hand and, like, a rapier in the other hand, um, and you'd get the abilities from both kind of thing. Sick. Yeah, that was, like, my, still- my plan. You're still already like restricted by the like one hand and two hand. I think that part's still like on there yeah, regardless. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah, you can't like you can't use like a, a great sword and a war axe, and they both supposed to be two handed weapons. But you can use two one handed primaries. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. yeah. At some point, pay some squire to follow behind you to be that second hand on each weapon, and then you're good. Really, <laughs> it's just you gotta pick a simian and really like uh, talk your DM up and and bribe them to let your tail be that extra hand. Yeah. There you go. I mean, or your tongue. For I it. like pizza. <laughs> 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 but yeah, so um, back to this, the range we talked about. A lot of these do have features. Take those into account. You know, like for example, with your Warhammer, you get a negative one to agility. Be aware of those things. Some of them are plus one to agility if you're taking the rapier. So just be aware of any of those features. You are going to impact any of your traits or your evasion, whatever is getting messed with. It will happen. Um, And then for the damage, be aware that remember that the way that you read this is d10 means a 10-sided die plus two so you're going to roll the 10-sided die plus two 
The reason it does not have a number at the beginning is that that is dictated by your proficiency, which functions completely different in this game as it does in Dungeons and Dragons. We will talk about that later. Just know that at level one, you have one proficiency. That means that you are going to roll one d10 and add two when you make an attack with this specific weapon. Um, in this case, you're going to roll one d8 and add nothing when you do it. Um, yeah. Oh, and then uh, so two d8, two dice that have eight sides, and exactly. then you roll them. One hundred percent. Yeah, that's that is uh, the nomenclature that I feel like throws a lot of people that are new to tabletop RPG off so like much. Yeah. Is we're like forty ten, and they're like forty ten. 40? 10? Yeah. <laughs> You're like, no, 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 no. The D is a die, is a dice, you know? Like, so yeah. Um, Got it. It does also have a damage type depending on if you're taking the physical weapon or the magical weapon. The only thing that I see that's different in this is there are some enemies that might not take damage to like a physical weapon and you might have to do magic um it seems like they flip flop though in some games in D, D, it's way more typical that they only are going to take magic damage that's not the case in here be be happy to take what you want um but when you have that picked when you have your primary weapon picked and a secondary weapon you're gonna get both Make sure that you are marking that in your character sheet up at the top. Does anybody have a very exciting weapon that they want to talk about at all? Um, I'm a ranger. I have a bow. Sick. I'm a ranger. Very good. Will you be using your feet? Um, yeah, but I'll be using feet tail the, the whole nine yards to help fire that bee. Very exciting. All right. Um, well, I mean, so the only other thing that I do think we should note is if your primary weapon takes both of your hands, then your secondary cannot go into here because it can't be active. You're going to list it down in this inventory weapon section. Okay. Somebody, I think maybe Chris, while we were talking initially, you had asked what this is for. That's what it's for to put your other oh, yeah. weapon that you can't equip. Oh, okay. I'm setting mine up on uh, the dagger heart or on the Demi Plane website. It's very helpful with like letting you like check which ones are like in your hands or not. And then, like if you try to pick a one handed and a two handed, it just doesn't let you. Yeah. It's like nah, bro. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Um. And obviously, we don't have to fully flesh out these characters tonight, so we're gonna move past this portion. But if you have any questions on that let us know we just need to have everything in place yeah. before our session we one. get to the end and all we want to do is talk about it we'll talk about it don't absolutely. worry absolutely we'll get these have very um who's the like, all right all right all right all right all right, Matthew all right. right. Matthew McConaughey. Matthew McConaughey. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. um so then pick some starting armor that's the other thing you can choose to wear nothing if you're nasty, um, you, but you, nasty. <laughs> but you want to choose, you know, anything that you want. Just again, take note of the name, flavor it however you want. Take note of the feature and that armor score. Once you have made your selection, is actually going to go back up to our character sheet on page one. That is what's going to get placed into this little shield icon. Plus or minus anything that has been affected by other items, like uh, we our, our Ridgeborn folks are getting a plus one to that. So that is what you're going to list there. Very briefly, I don't want to get too in the weeds on this, but the, the way that your armor works is at level one, you get three uses of your armor. If you take a hit, say I rolled a 14, and a 14 is the severe, and the armor is 10, you could mark one of your armor slots and reduce the damage by those 10 points that your armor is worth. That's going to get your damage down to four hit points, and all of a sudden, you're in minor territory because your minor is four. That means instead of marking three hit points, you only have to mark one, okay? You could use multiple armor at the same time, or sorry, you could use all three at the same time if you wanted to however you want to do it um but just remember that that's how it works once you've used all three your armor breaks it's not usable anymore until you get it repaired by someone or spend time during resting to actually do it so 
I like bugaloo in chat. You mean badass. I certainly do. <laughs> like, <laughs> all right. Um, everybody okay with weapons and armor and stuff. That's like the most tedious of these discussions, I feel like. But yeah. did that, and that brought my impressive 12 evasion down to a 10. Too sick. What did you choose? The shield, the tower shield? Uh, no, I have a two handed a war hammer, and then for the armor is a full plate. Mm. As a rogue, you know, it's important to be protected. Yeah, and slow. <laughs> I mean, I they'll that. never see him coming. He'll be moving so slow, <laughs> they'll be like, it's a statue. <laughs> Or you yell at them from the distance, you don't see shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Don't amazing. run, I'm coming to stab you. Okay, so we are wrapping up a lot of the stuff. The last <laughs> real piece that we need to do related to equipment stuff is your um, starting inventory. So again, here on the page, uh, sorry, on these items, you have a section to designate your inventory. And it tells you on your character class items, Things that you can take. It's in here specifically. Oh, also, it is worth noting. The character guide does suggest a primary weapon. If you want to take what it suggests, it suggests your armor. You can... Th these are pretty good little cheat sheets. I really like them. Um, so, for your inventory, you're going to take whatever is listed here and mark it on your sheet. Uh, remember that the gold specifically in this, it's not... A number you're gonna take a handful um, unless you are for example Kayla's character and she gets an extra handful um, you will mark those in the gold section so if you have two handfuls you're marking two boxes um, then also you are going to choose between I think everyone has the same option here either a minor health potion that's gonna heal I believe two health points or a minor stamina potion that heals two stress so choose whichever you get one you want Lastly, every class has the choice to pick between two special items. In the case of the ranger, you get to have, for example, a trophy from your first kill or a seemingly broken compass. Steven, do you know which one you're picking? Well, it's the seemingly broken compass. It always leads back to the hot the springs. Oh mm -hmm. my god, I love yeah. it. That's yeah. so cute. Your North Star, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So, Justin, what item is yours? Uh, mine came with a grappling hook. Is that or uh, forgery tools, which I don't need paper. Grappling yes. hook's fucking dope. That's sick. Mm -hmm. Especially, like, in the com the community that you grew up in and everything. So yeah, I'd, I'd also put my second weapon as a grappler. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm I just, just got two say. hooks. There's, you know, grappling hook on one hand, grappler on the other, so I can grab people, grab a cliff, climb oh. up it, and then drop the people. Maybe who knows? You're Tarzan. Uh, this is a crazy. I, I, I gotta build a fit into this monkey community. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Okay, Kayla, what was your special item? Um, I had the option for a romance novel or a letter never opened, and I went with the romance novel because she's romance a novel is so good. I love that. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. It's very important to her. <laughs> and Chris, what did you? So choose? I had the option between the drawing of a lover or a sharpening stone. I picked a uh, drawing of a lover, and it's a picture of him smiling with his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> and he, just looks all the time. he is a lover he rouse him up gets him ready he thinks it's a photo but it's actually like a mirror and every time he's just smiling the same way <laughs> oh shit he's the narcissus of the campaign amazing somebody's gotta look out for them sparkly whites <laughs> my shiny teeth in me um <laughs> oh no all right, cool. So that closes out our inventory. So then we are going to do descriptions, you know, take a little moment to mark your own stuff. Um, that's all inside of here on the same area of your character sheet. They give you samples, but again, you can choose whatever you want. But, you know, examples are what kind of clothes, what kind of eyes, what is your body like? It's just ways of kind of distinguishing your character and you getting a feel for who they are. If you don't like any of it, change it. If your eyes are going to be pure black, you do not have to choose one of these. But you can make those notations whenever you want. Um, and then we have to get into the next big part of this conversation, which is choosing our domain cards. So... 
in Daggerheart specifically, each one of the classes, your abilities outside of your class feature are really based on the domains that you have at your disposal for your class. Each class has two types of domains that they can use. And like I already showed, if you go down to the first page below your character items, uh, sorry, below the build items and the class, uh, ancestry community stuff you're going to get to a page that shows your options you get to choose two at level one so for example with the ranger you have the bone domain that has deft maneuvers nimble and i see it coming each one with a different thing that you can do these are all abilities and for sage domain you have vicious entangle gifted tracker and nature's tongue so since i'm here already steven do you have an idea of what you're going to be taking yet um i have been oscillating um but what i what i would probably do having being the the more veteran player is i think uh chris also has bone as one of his domains yep yep uh, i'd let chris pick his first just to make sure we aren't necessarily picking the same ones oh fair i assume we were both probably looking at uh nimble that's the one i was gonna go for Nibble's definitely super good, but if you want Nibble, I might take I See It Coming, because it also is is good for that same kind of thing. Sick, sick. Uh, also, um, can we both have the same cards? Yeah, so we definitely oh, okay. can, I think. So that's something that um, I should point out, saying what I did was more of, uh, since we're trying to play test it some, I want to kind of move around and use some of the different abilities. Good call, good call. So we could try everything out. Exactly. Cool. So, Chris, you're taking Nimble, which adds your agility score to your evasion. Sick. And yeah, then... I did that. And on my secondary, I picked up the Rapier that gives me an extra agility, so that did, like, plus three evasion. Oh, my God. All right. And what... So, since we're talking about you now in your Fairy Warrior, what is your second domain card that you're most interested in? And it can change. It certainly can. Yeah. So for now, I might change it later, but I'm going with Whirlwind to start. Because thematically, it just sounds awesome of him. Just seems like something Tank Molerson would do. Yeah, so this one is really cool. When you make a successful attack using a weapon with melee or very close range, you may also spend a hope to use that role against every other enemy in that weapon's range. A fairy doing this is hilarious to me. That's amazing. I love that. Yeah, he's just in the air anyway, you know. Mm -hmm. They do take half damage rounded up, but doing damage to just a group as a little tiny fairy is incredible. I love that so much. All right. So, Stephen, then going back to yours, since we know one of yours is going to be I See It Coming, mm -hmm. which, what does it do? I See It Coming, it is... Uh... When you are targeted by a ranged attack, mark a stress to roll your hope die and increase your evasion against this attack by its value. Oh my god, so up to a 12? Yep. <laughs> Wild, yeah. okay. Um, it does uh, make you mark stress, which it's important to notate that once you run out of your 5 stress I think you get, you start taking hit points. Yeah. Yeah, tr that's true. It's really a one or the other, so you can't use this just constantly. But maybe take mm -hmm. a stamina potion instead of the health potion, and you know, like, yeah. What just What about me. your other? Uh, oh wait, we so we have. I see it coming. So What's your other? So I'm thinking about taking vicious entangle. Ooh. Okay. Okay. So this is like um. This is so this would be an actual spell, um, and it is it is uh, make a, a spell casting roll against the target within the uh, far range. On a success, the roots and vines reach out from the ground and temporarily restrain them, dealing one d eight of physical damage. 
but you can also spend a hope when you hit a success and restrain any enemies that are very close to that original target. So, like, if you've got a group of people wow. trying to run the hallway, you can use that in a hope and, like, dead stop everybody, basically. I'm sick crowd, crowd control, yeah. yeah. I am feeling a tag team special coming on already between the Vicious Entangle <laughs> and the Whirlwind. <laughs> cool, okay. Exactly. All right. Um, Kayla, have you already picked yours or do you need a little bit more time? Well, I was I was wanting some help. So yeah. what are the little circles with the lightning bolts in the corner? What does that mean? Steven, do you want to take that? So that is something that we as a initial starting party aren't going to necessarily have to worry about. But later okay. in the game, when you get to higher levels, you end up with a ton of domain cards and you only have a certain amount that you can like have out and be using at any given moment um with those if that's in your like domain deck and not like in your like cards that you have activated at that moment you pay that much in stress to just automatically yank that wow. bad boy from your deck and play it as if it does that replace one of your other ones or it's just you can pull it out and play it it, it does replace yeah. so yeah. like not picking one of the zero ones you can basically has a, have those as backups yeah. like you pick two and like that uh, would cost the stress and you can at any point sw- trade out one of those yep. okay yeah so then um so I think on the Grace one, I think the inspirational words, because she's real sweet like that. I think that's that, so that fits with her character. Mm-hmm. It's very helpful. Um, and then the other ones, I was looking, and really the Book of Ava down there, because it had like an ice spike thing, which I thought was neat. The fire one doesn't make sense for her, but I think the ice one does. And this is so. our first grimoire that we're coming across, and the grimoires like are cool because they have multiple spells that you can use. I think it is specifically a codex thing. I It mm-hmm. might be another one, but the grimoires are codex. Yeah, and this one cool. has three different spells you could choose to use any of them you know you could do the power yeah, push I mean, your armor to heat to to bump your own armor score or somebody else's um, because the way that that works for newer people target can include yourself so you could be the target um and then ice spikes yeah doing damage mm-hmm. um which just like the whirlwind and just like the entangle you can treat it as a ranged weapon attack against a target or group so it's interesting that they have the 1d6 there on that one so i'm assuming on the other two it's rolled based on your proficiency but not the armor i think that is yeah so anytime so that's what i've assumed i haven't actually seen it written out yet um but i've assumed that anytime it just says d6 or d8 or d12 if it doesn't have a number in front of it that's off your proficiency is what i'm assuming attacks i I think are always proficiency based what was that kayla yes i said i don't understand that. Sure. So, okay. so look, if we look very closely at these, if you look at power push and you look at ice spikes, they say D10. That's a 10 yes. sided die, but they don't have a number before that. Mm-hmm. Look at Teva's armor. It has a number before the D6. It says one D6. It's specifying mm-hmm. you roll one six sided die. That's that formula. Mm-hmm. The other two are not specifying the number of tens that you roll because it's going to be based on that number of dice that you roll is going to be different at higher levels. At level one, it's going to just be one. But when you level up, if you increase a thing that is called your proficiency, you will be able to roll multiple of those d10s. Yeah, so, like, if your same character was level 10, you might, I'm, I'm not sure what the number is, but you may be rolling four D6s or four D10s instead. Yeah. Absolutely. So, it's like on Baldur's Gate on Eldritch Blast. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Yep. Absolutely. I love Baldur's okay. Gate. It has helped us all. Thank you. Okay. And then, Justin, you are our last one for this portion. So for the easy one for me was a uh, pick and pull. You know, I'm, I'm a rogue. I, I mean, I'm playing it weird. I got my, I got, I got expectations. I could be able to pick a lock, even if it's going to be with force as it has it uh, there, or, you know, I could just break the lock. I'm going to pick it, you know, whatever. Um, so that's, that's one. And the other one, I'm either between Enrapture or Deaf Deceiver. I'm probably going to go with Enrapture first and then have that Deaf Deceiver as a backup. Deaf Deceiver, can't pronounce. Uh, 
But yeah, those are the two I'm leaning towards at the moment. So in Rapture, I can basically like narrow a person's focus to like, hey, only worry about me. You know, as the rogue I am, I'm one v one in someone. Maybe yeah. they don't know me yet. They don't know I'm there yet, bro. but I'm making them know that I'm here. Uh, the other option was that other deaf deceiver one, where I can, you know, like I said, try to you know, try to trick or deceive someone. Uh, I don't think that's going to be uh, the route I'm going to be going unless I'm literally trying to convince them that they don't see me. Um, we'll, we'll see. I like to imagine that, like, it's like uh, Jimbo just like separates his beard and it's just like camo underneath, and they're like, "Where'd he go?" Oh. <laughs> I'm is like a Debo character, or like you get Scott doing something. He's like, "You just see shit." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're right. Yeah, um, that is your uh, chain. Don't worry, sir. <laughs> Well, this is really cool. So we have our domains mostly picked out. We'll wrap that up like later and everything. I do think it's really cool that I think everyone ended up choosing one from each of the domains accessible to them. But I do want to note, you don't have to. You can pick two. Oh, I didn't two. know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Perfect. You could, if you happened to like, um, you know, the grimoires specifically and you wanted to only do those instead of doing any of these um uh grace ones you could you can choose mm -hmm. two of any amount so yeah and you don't have to change they don't have to be set in stone right now so take mm -hmm. time think about it and everything but yeah okay. so something that's cool with the uh ranger class um is i get an extra thing right like as i'm creating my character for my companion um so i am this is the idea is like they got to have something to eat while they're up there, right? Um, and they can't just always be eating on like leaves and stuff. They're monkeys. So they have to have uh, some kind of livestock in like, I feel like a chicken, just like a rooster, like hanging out with the monkey is like. Wait, perfect. is your companion like a food animal? Like... He's, a, he's a rooster. He, he, I, 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 I think I would have saved him from the, the livestock. Okay. Oh, you so saved you're not, him. I thought he was like a backup. I thought he was like emergency no, survival like you food. You were keeping him and you were like, I might have to eat you, rooster. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Steven, I was worried that you were trying to like just repeat the same thing I did with one of my characters a long time ago with the, with the octopus I would carry around and you know, non lethally get some free octopus legs. Uh, oh my that's god. That's wild. I love it. It was an evil campaign. It was evil campaign. I was the neutral character, but it was evil. Was it you yeah. that also did unspeakable things to mounts like like murdered horses at one point? Was that you? You look no, like you're about no, no, to defend no. yourself. Okay. I, I've had a lot of mounts. They have died. None that I just outright killed or anything like that. I, I got it was sad, but I was always I just start, I just started naming them Dog Five or Dog that's, Six okay, or whatever. That's it was what I was remembering. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, great. Yeah, I, I, I spent the money to re revive them and stuff. It just you know got expensive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is so expensive. You're the only person I've ever played with that so reliably did mounts because it's so much more work than just regular play. <laughs> Okay, so that's mechanical stuff. We have a good idea of where we're going there. So now to get back to um, kind of fleshing out the last piece of who your character is, is really answering the background questions. So on page two of all of your character sheets, you do have areas that ask you for details about your background. Man, this the ranger sheet has like two extra pages in it. So I keep having that problem. Um, so we're only going to do these background questions for now. We're going to do these connections in just a minute. But the prompts, again, you do not have to use. You can change the wording of them. But again, they're ways for you to answer something about your character. So I would like each person to read one of these questions, either change it or whatever, and answer it for yourself. Um, we're back very right quick. No problem. I got my headset on, though. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Kayla, did we do this together already? I think we might have done some of it. Are you... We had, like, kind of gone over what these questions were, but we hadn't answered them. I think you said I have to ask them to, like, yeah. certain people in the group? Or no, 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 no. Those are going to be the connections. The background okay. questions are for you personally. Do you want to take the first one? Mm -hmm. If you want to pass mm -hmm. for now, we can go to Steven or Justin and put them in the Steven. hot spot. You look like you want to do it first. I always can go first. I'm never, I'm, I'm never uh, afraid to throw, throw my madness out into the open. 
Um, so your first kill almost killed you too. What was it? And what part of you is never the same after? We live high in the mountains, right? Mm-hmm. Dire goat. Okay, great. And it, you know, I'm out and I'm like- How did it get you out of the trees? Teddy, so here's the thing is Teddy has this, that's why I was never the same afterwards. He was like, I don't gotta be in a tree. That's just some old monkey talk. No, no, there's no reason to be afraid to be on the ground. He's on the ground fucking around doing his thing. And then Dire Goat hits his ass. Dire Almost goat. kills him. <laughs> but he takes it out. And ever since then, he's always kind of closer to a tree now. <laughs> I, I love to that. Be safe. <laughs> you can't trust those things on the ground. <laughs> All right. Not very many things can quickly move through a tree. <laughs> Justin. You take one. Um, so for, uh, let's see. Uh, do we all have the same ones or we have different oh, ones? I for think they are each? all different ones. Um, let me find, make is, sure. Is it per, is it per I, have, I have mine over here, but I was just curious. Like, is it per, uh, like, uh, ancestry? Or, uh, I think it's class. It's class. class. It's class, class? Based, okay. yeah. Yeah, so for my first one, it was, uh, what did you get caught doing that had you exiled from your home community? Uh, and so mine, you know, pretty much, you know, a miner in these mountains all the time. I eventually, I came across a massive score, a massive uh, gym or some kind that just would have upended my community. I liked how things were, didn't want to, you know, keep, keep the usual flow. We bring some gems in, you know, get our little bit of wealth, trade it, whatnot. This is would have upended everything. And so I just didn't tell the community about it. People in my group ended up basically like finding out, uh, and that's what, you know, it's me keeping that secret away from my community. Like, got me thrown out. They still don't know. Just... And then we found him on the mountain. We, My, my people found him. <laughs> Do you carry yeah, that I score keep... with you to this day? No, I, I, I just like keeping it keeping it there and keeping it secret. Like, it was too big to even carry. I just, you know. Just worthless. Just a worthless, greedy moment. Oh, you're not even for myself. Just didn't want the community to have it. It would have, you know, turned them against each other. Oh, that's beautiful. Like the one can, ring. It's yeah. just like, uh, he just leaves it with my people, and that's like his free bath baths. <laughs> like, like, man, as long as it's here, you just have as many baths. It's as the guy who brought us the greatest <laughs> shiny. <laughs> <laughs> they don't do anything with it. They just look at it. They're happy mm-hmm. about it. Okay, Kayla. And again, you could change okay. any of these questions, but I okay. can go first if she needs more time. Do you need oh, a little bit ready. more time, Kayla? Are you ready? I, I think I got it. Um, okay. So the question was: You always looked up to another bard. Who are they, and why do you idolize them? So I feel like she would go into town a lot, like with her parents. You know, when they were going to go talk to the merchants or just. I don't know. Check out the peasants. You know what I mean? Check but they're not really paying peasants. attention, right? <laughs> check them out. Look at them. Uh, <laughs> view them. But uh, they're not really paying attention to her. They're more focusing on her sister and everything like that. And there was a bard, and he's a blind bard. His name was Bojangles. And he would <laughs> play for free drinks at the tavern. And she really liked him. So she would like sneak off. And he's actually who taught her as long as she kept having money for his drinks. So oh she my gosh. Money, you know. I love that. What instrument did Bojangles play? You know he played a banjo. He Fantastic. had to teach her. Fantastic. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I but love he's blind. it. And he's blind, which is blind. wow the wow the character <laughs> building that goes into that. Okay, and then Chris, we're up to you at this point. So what's your question and what's your response? Right, background questions, right? Mm-hmm. So my, my first one here for my class is, who taught you to fight and why did they stay behind when you left home? So for Tooth Fairies, who taught me to fight was my fairy grad, my fairy godmother. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like a Jedi cast system over there. Okay. I think Yoda, but fabulous. And yeah, she stayed home because uh, she's an old lady, you know, her adventuring days are behind her. And it's uh, this my turn to get out there. That's get those teeth. Cute. I really like the fairy godmother being a part of that, too. Mm-hmm. We've yeah, also talked. Did she teach you to sparkle? 
Oh, no one teaches you to sparkle, you know. You just <laughs> <laughs> you either have it or you don't, Rachel. <laughs> you can't teach that. You should can't teach it. Wild. All right. So I think that everybody has thought of these already, but this is really the last big piece of the, your own specific character, which is that in Daggerheart, you don't really get true proficiency in the way that we usually think about it but you do get to name your own experiences you get two at level one one that you get to assign a plus two and one that you assign a plus one to it can be anything related to your character and then you get to utilize that when we're playing so you know for example if i was making someone and i wanted to say uh chef's kiss if they were a cook then i could then any time that they were like foraging for something then they might be able to add their proficiency to it and that's just a very bad example of an experience but that's the concept so we can go in whatever order we want to. Um, Steven, do you have your experiences since your character is new in, in concept? Mm, I have some ideas. I'll let other people go first and I'll shape mine up a little better. Okay. Anybody, whoever wants to go. I, I, can, I can go first. I already talked a lot about kind of my background, you know, being a minor underground and stuff. Uh, first experience I've written out as a... Uh, for those that play uh, Deep Rock Galactic, may pick, uh, may recognize this, but Rock and Stone, uh, you know, it's very good at uh, in, you know anything like rock related, digging related. This is where he's going to shine. Uh, maybe even just like identifying different types of rock, you know, kind of more geology background. But yeah, so Rock and Stone I have as the first one, just kind of like this is his like one of his abilities. Uh, second up, I'm so so floating the name for this one, but when it's concept is generally around drinking. Uh, dwarfs like their beer, uh, and so I'm either going with Cheers or Where's My Beer? Uh, just as his, uh, you know, just, where, where's his beer uh, or hold my beer, even uh, going around there, That's mainly cool. around drinking, very good at drinking, uh, or even just knowing where to find drinks. <laughs> I love that. Maybe it will help you all find water at some point. Who knows? Probably Probably only beer. When we get in town, only beer. <laughs> I can tell you where there's like you know it's like I'm looking like there's no beer that way so maybe that's what you want. That's pretty good. I like yeah. that. <laughs> All right, Chris, you have yours already, don't you? Yeah, yeah. So my first one is like uh, tickets to the gun show because it takes kind of <laughs> uh, you know a little full of it. himself. It's like a charisma modifier, but also could be like a. If we're in a tavern, someone's acting up, he could be like, you know, looks like someone needs two tickets to the gun show. <laughs> he goes after him. Um, my other one is Spit and Chicklets. My favorite, like, podcast is a hockey podcast, and that's the name of it. And uh, hockey players are just, like, known for missing a bunch of teeth, so I kind of wanted to bring that into it. Still figuring out how to, like, work it, but I wanted to have something to do with his teeth that he has in his little pouch. <laughs> I love that so much. Yeah, yeah, those are my two so far. Those are great. It, it could almost be an intimidation check. I don't know, because you shake your bag of teeth at people, and they're, they're a little scared. Oh, my God. That's true. Absolutely true. Or maybe you put the teeth into your own mouth and use them as ammunition and just... <gasps> Oh, gross. I was thinking about it. You know, like, like a Gatling people when gun. they do a duel, they take a glove off and they smack them with it. Yeah. yeah. Do that with his teeth, just put yeah. <laughs> it directly into their eyes. Mm -hmm. They're blind. Yeah. Yeah, right. still workshopping it, but it's got potential. I love it. And Kayla, I know one of yours, but do you have both of them at yes. this point? What are they? Yes, I, I think. Um, so the. The main one is her Swamp Princess one, and that would be like a charisma check, but also if she needs to know some weird, obscure courtly dance or, you know, needs to be able to read, you know, a contract or something like that, that would be what that would be used for. The other one is which way are you looking? Because she looks both ways and like a distraction thing. Like, you know, if she was like in a combat situation, they were like, oh, wait a minute, which way? What's that? An amazing poker face. That's so yeah. funny. That really <laughs> That's got That's true. Me. You could use it that way too. Yeah, which way? <laughs> I love that so much. 
All right, now, Steven, I know that you were really building the concept during this, so if you don't have experiences, that is totally fine, but do you so, have them? One of them, my plus one, is uh, uh, more based off of my community, and it's like we're in like ridges and mountains and stuff like that. We would have to lead people up every once in a while. It'd be, um, put your foot here. Is that what it's called? Put your foot here? That's good. I love that. It's like a guiding one. It's like a Sherpa. That's yeah. great. I love that. Okay, that's really cool. Okay. The second one I'm still tossing about, I'm either wanting it to be a like a distraction based thing as well, which mm -hmm. if it's a distraction based thing, it's it's probably gonna be Good gods, what's that? Um <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, you take your tail and you poke them on the shoulder, and they look that way. Oh, very good, uh, Steven. Yes. I thought of our duo, our duo move already. Yeah. Put your foot up his ass. Oh my god! I hate it. Like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Yeah, the other one with the, is either going to be like uh, something to do with like hot baths, or <laughs> um, you know, I am a ranger. I had to do the hunting. I had to bring in in, in dire dire goats and the like to feed the dire goats the in our 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 community. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well. We'll have those all fleshed out, but it sounds like we have pretty good ideas of it. I think it's very funny that y'all are all high evasion and distraction squad. It's like, this is a clown car of a party, and I really enjoy it. So, Rex Fairy Forest. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the last little piece of your character sheet that you're going to do, you know, is fill out your name, fill out your character's pronouns. We don't need to do that here specifically. But at this point, you should have a full character sheet with everything that we expect to have on it. Um, and so you have your characters. Um I don't know that because we've spent so long with all of this, I, we don't need to go through them specifically. But if everybody wants to just say like, so that I can do a clip. Okay. I want to do a clip for Twitch. <laughs> um, very briefly, say your character, their race, their class, and anything about them. And we'll start just going around. So Steven, then Kayla, then Chris, and then Justin. So Steven, do you want to go? Um, yeah, I'm a Simia Ranger. Um, I am a beast bound, and my companion is a um, brightly colored rooster. Um, we we hail from uh, a ridge, uh, uh, a mountaintop area where my community houses um, hot springs, and uh, uh, his name is. Is uh, Tedios, but he goes by Ted. Oh, I like that. I love that so much. Mm. All right, Kayla. Okay, so my character is Anura. She is a highborn ribbit. Uh, she's a bard and then specifically a troubadour. Uh, she is a swamp princess. So they come from like one specific very tiny swamp, not very big. Um, but she's the the spare child so she's the second board so she just kind of gets to go off and do what she wants to do nobody's paying attention to her so. <laughs> i love her so much i can't <laughs> wait to share all of the art that's gonna happen for these characters okay chris i'm uh tank mollerson aka tankerbell i'm a fairy warrior the call of the brave and i'm a wonderborn i run around and Kind of like a carny. I'm a little guy that picks up heavy stuff. Very cute. And Justin, rounding out our squad. Uh, I am playing uh, Jimbo, a uh, Ridgeborn Dwarf, uh, a Syndicate Rogue specifically, um, from the uh, same ridge as Steven's character, uh, just the underground portion where my you know community of dwarves lived, all heavily uh, in miners. Uh, you know, not chipping at rocks, not the other kind. <laughs> Uh, 
But yeah, I'm, I'm going to be playing a rogue, uh, not like you'd expect, just, you know, smashing things real hard. Convince them they don't see me coming. They never see you coming. <laughs> Yay, we have a squad! Good job, everybody! Okay, the last piece of the character and making an adventuring party is on your character sheets. You have an area that's called connections right next to your background questions. So for this piece, the intention is everybody who's played tabletop RPG has had this problem before of being like, why am I here with you guys? And there's a lot of little ways that people try to lampshade this. But this asks you to point to someone at the table and specifically ask them a question. So we're going to do this. We're going to go around the same group. So, um, Stephen, do you want to start with anybody and just ask them one of these questions? Okay, let me look. Let me look. Um... Kayla, what is a friendly competition that our characters would have? Okay, good question. We do a rock skipping competition. You're not very good. You're trying very hard to beat me. You'll never will, but you're trying very hard. I, so. I blame I blame the cool water. I'm like, it's not hot enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, no, 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 it's right. Your rock is wrong, <laughs> but you don't listen, and it's your business. But. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I love that so much. It's a good one. Okay, Kayla, your turn. <clears throat> Justin, what do I do that annoys you? Oh boy. <laughs> so you're a highborn. Uh, it's definitely gonna be uh, something around the highborn uh, area of your your character. I got you. Oh. I mean, it's honestly just got to, or for probably like a combination of you and Steven's character, but just how often y'all like want to bathe and keep yourself clean. It's probably more so that you're, it's your ribbit, just you're always, you know, a little more slick. Uh, and I just think that that's so dangerous. Uh, you need to have a good buildup on there to protect yourself. And I'm sure you're just constantly <laughs> convincing me to, you know, shower and or to bathe, but mm -hmm. it's, it's not safe. <laughs> A level of dust apparently keeps you safe. Yep. I love yeah. that. It's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris. Uh, one I got is what mundane thing off the battlefield do you usually help me with? And uh, this one I'll have uh, Justin's character. Some teeth are a little hard to to get out there, so I use his dwarf mining skills. <laughs> to uh, get those big molars out for me. Oh my god. She's Wait, a miner. What, which character is the wanderer? Uh, uh, mine. Yeah. Oh, it's yours. Okay, I was about to say, you, you would have pliers in that bag. You could fit yeah, your teeth yeah, out. Yeah, true, true. I can put my little muscles. war pick in there just to help, you know, like, kind of pry it open. <laughs> you know, Keep his mouth little... open, all right. <laughs> or, like, somebody to hold my feet as I'm, like, diving in the mouth, like, working on the for the bigger creatures, <laughs> and don't let you fall in, since I'm one of the taller ones, I think. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think you are the tallest. Four nine king. Tallest yeah. four, nine. four nine king. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool. Um. And then Justin. Let's see. Uh. Stephen. What did I re? All right. Let's see. Uh. What? Yeah. What did I recently convince you to do that got us both in trouble? Um. I mean. You recently convinced me to leave our, our our hot springs to go on this fucking adventure. Oh. And now I don't get regular baths anymore. Half the oh, time, no. they're not hot enough. <laughs> Hold his tail. All right. Well, that like, you know, you guys can take all of that into your next adventures. You know some of the conflicts that you have in the group, some of the shared backstory that you have with your party members. And so that is at that at this point, that's the full character creation portion. Um, there is like 
another piece to this, which is going through like a map setup. But given that we have been here for a while, I think we're just going to skip that for the night. Um, but I did think it might be a fun little closing activity specifically because we have new players. This is something that I used to do a lot when I was working with newbies is to do some test roles. So we'll do them very quickly and everything, but to kind of get a feel Wait. for how rolling why are we why are we rushing um <laughs> i just don't want to be here forever but but we're gonna I'm... it's, it's gonna be a great time it's gonna be a great time so does everybody have remember that for this specifically you need to have a hope die and a fear die of your two different colors if everybody wants to like show them and stuff what your dice look like oh my goodness okay Me so my best friend yeah <laughs> um kayla i think that yours might be a d8 let me see that okay. what real Wait, quick which one? No, no 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 which one am i supposed to hold up the, i just thought i was picking them they have 12 sides okay is it, is it this one Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. And the white okay. one that matches that. That's what I did before. That that didn't happen. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. That's exactly, yeah, <laughs> perfect. So, all right. So remember that for this part, we are going to be rolling both. I'm going to, in this case, tell you what the difficulty class is so that you know if you're passing the check. You are going to add your own modifier to it whatever trait modifier you've put in you're gonna oh, add that so and that that's something that's uh they recommend for the game as well and i pulled these out as an example piece but these are little things so um rather than having to like say plus two they say grab these little and you can use whatever just like character specific um tokens and then you can just toss those out while you're rolling your dice and just add that in so if you have like you add your numbers on your dice and if you have two tokens out you just add two to it um just to like give you a like physical representation of that number on your like rolling surface yeah. that's yeah and absolutely for this also i want to note we have our hope this is all freebies if you can apply your experience to any of these tell us how you're applying that experience and you can add either your plus two or your plus one let's not add both in this case but the first one okay we're gonna be making an agility check okay so a tree is falling you are you are walking through the sable wood at this point a tree is falling right beside you and you need to get out of the way fast so we're all gonna roll for agility Again, if you have an experience in this, you can use it. Um, the skill check in this case is a 12. So roll both of your dice and don't touch them once you've rolled. Go ahead, roll your do dice. We tell you, do you tell you our experience beforehand? Yeah, ab we... absolutely, if you have one to apply. Okay, so first off, I would have, I feel like this is an ability check, uh, so I would have advantage Great. Uh, because of my race. Absolutely. Um, so that means I add a D6 to my roll. 100%. Um, and then I would say that uh, I would yell out, uh, um, dodge here, put your foot here. And I would use my put your foot here experience to uh, help people get out of the way. Amazing. So you're getting a D6 and you're adding your plus two to that, right? Plus one. That's plus a, one. The plus one. Yeah. Okay. Is anybody else using an experience for this agility check? Um, are Can there I... any words? Oh, go ahead. Can I use Swamp Princess? This is not the first time a tree has fallen in her swamp. I'm saying 100%. Absolutely you can. I love okay. it. She was ready. Her little ears perked up. She has no ease. I remember the little ear hole perked up. That's, yeah, and usually you would mark your hope off to use it, so you don't, okay. but in this case, you're not going to, it's all freebies right. for now, so, okay. all right, okay. and anybody else have an experience to use? Is, is there a large rock nearby? Uh, I'm going to roll a, I'm going to roll a d6, th a four through a six will mean yes. It's a four, so there is a large rock nearby. Ooh. I'm not very, I'm not very uh, agile, so I'm looking to just, you know, turtle near a large rock using my, you know, rock and stone. I know that's a sturdy rock. A tree might land on it, but I'll be protected there, and I can just kind of crawl out of the, what's, you know, a little slant there from it. Amazing. Which okay. experience is that using? Uh, rock and stone. Amazing. That'd be a plus two. 
Chris, to negate my negative. Do you have one that you want to use? Uh, I don't, I don't think any of mine are really applicable, but I'm a pretty agile fairy anyway. Right. So. so because we took time to do that, if you've already rolled, totally fine. If you want to re-roll, that's okay. But remember, if you leave them once you've rolled. So go ahead. Yeah. And then, know, uh, uh -huh. I was going to say, I'm taking your suggestion on mine since I kind of like a light one and a dark one, but this one is covered in skulls. I'm going to have that as my negative one. I or that. my fear one. Fear. Perfect. Yeah. All right. So again, the DC was 12 in this case. So the first thing you do is you're going to add the totals of both of your dice plus any of your modifiers. So did everyone succeed on the check? Did everybody roll more than 12? Is it more than or meet it to beat it? Meet it I to beat it. 12. Okay. okay. Exactly Perfect. 12. Perfect. Oh, yeah. Amazing. But I rolled okay. with I rolled with fear, though, because the, the black die was... Tired. That was going to be yeah. the next thing that I was asking. So, who rolled with hope and who rolled with fear? 16 oh, fear for me. Uh, I got a 20 with hope. <gasps> oh, my God. Oh, my I'm God. Let's go. Okay, perfect. Well, we all understand how that works. You know, in this case, maybe y'all were trying to sneak through the woods, those of you that rolled with fear. And unfortunately, during that little fiasco, you did let out a yelp. And now you know that it's going to be a little run. But fantastic job, everyone. Okay, next one. We're going to do a presence check, okay? Same rules apply. So first, here's the scenario. You have mistakenly wandered into a restricted area of the library and you forgot your ring of invisibility darn all of a sudden though the librarian which who is a very intimidating dwarven woman with the most beautiful beard you have ever seen comes around the corner you guys claim as a group to have gotten lost but you're gonna need to roll a presence check and let me know if you're a role you are invoking an experience you are specifically trying to deceive in this situation so uh the skill check is a 15 she's a tough if very sexy librarian are there any experience that we can apply to this anybody got experience sexy librarians are my guy's specialty he has <laughs> two tickets to the gun show <laughs> excellent so, yes i'm okay. gonna use that perfect I... and he's just gonna be flexing around a little bit inconspicuously and uh it's it, you know it's gonna work try to make that that dwarf blush i love it mm -hmm. who else has an experience i, I want to use the plus one which way are you looking i legitimately didn't know where i was going amazing i was following the wrong eye fantastic sorry, librarian. absolutely steven justin either of you applying an experience or uh -huh. I'm curious, I'm like, if this would be like, you know, using a domain card during not in, like not combat. So this would be a situation where like, oh. I might would try to help the entire party. Like say, if I were to go first, I could try to enrapture this other dwarf uh, lady with her beautiful beard uh, and just pull her attention in towards me <laughs> to like help the rest of the party go by un like, unnoticed. In every other actual situation, yes. In this testing roles, <laughs> I'm gonna say no so that we could do the, pro but I love where your head is at, absolutely. Yeah, that's why I was trying to walk through that. If that, you know, that is a yeah. reasonable, like, uh, mechanically works. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Like it, those abilities are not specifically combat or anything. They can be used at any point. So, okay. So we know the people that are using experiences. Again, we're going to go ahead and roll. This is a 15 check. She's a sexy, tough librarian dwarf lady. Go ahead and roll. And you did because it's a presence check. So if I have a plus two on that, I get to have yes, that. Yes, right? absolutely. That's, that's absolutely part of this. Okay. okay. So 15 is the check. Has everybody understands how the math is working and everybody's confident with it, right? How, who did we get any successes? I just, I, I met it at a 15. At a 15? Failures? Yeah. Did anybody uh, I got the <laughs> thir 13 was fear. Uh, she is too sexy. Too sexy. All I got right. an eight with hope. She's more of a beard lady. I only have a mustache. You know? Yeah, listen, she's not interested in your mustache. <laughs> and in fact, she is ashamed that you would even try to get her attention when she has the most luxurious mane. She's throwing you all out by the scruff of your, or sorry, your failures out by the scruff of your neck. <laughs> like, 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 okay, great. Fantastic. I promise we're going to go. We only have a couple more. So here's a 
McGruber, this is going to be a choose your own, okay? You were tipped off that a bomb was set up in the highest tower of the castle. You are in the room right now, and it's clicking down with five seconds to go. This is not for everybody. Somebody make a decision very quickly. What are you doing? Feel free to ask questions about the room you're in, or tell me what is in the room to help you disarm that bomb. So somebody... Specifically disarm. Is there... Well, no, anything that you want to do. Anything we have any idea how big this there, bomb would be? It's just like, we're, we're, yeah. Uh, yes, there is absolutely a window. An excellent question, Kayla. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I can fly it out. Yeah, my thoughts are maybe using this uh, like grappler thing, which I think like when launches a grappling hook, grabs onto something and pulls it back. I'm curious, you know, run up, put the thing on the grappler, initially launch the grappler out said window. Uh, I love Just it. Just move further away. I'm going to say that that's a finesse check, I think. <laughs> Sounds like <laughs> a finesse to me. So I'm going to I'm going to give it a I'm going to say it's finesse. Now I will say, do you have an experience you I don't think that there's an experience you would be able to apply to this, but I will also say anyone who can help you could give you advantage by expending their own hope. Is anybody going to help? Our friend. Okay, how? So, he's taking the grappler, right? Mm hmm And throwing it out the window with his grappling hook. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, as a fairy, I'm going to fly by the window, and it's going to be like an ollie you. And just in case he misses, I'm going to smack it <laughs> so that it hits the window exactly. I'm going to be there playing like the opposite of a goaltender, just making sure it goes it. in. Mm -hmm. That yeah. is exactly the kind of thing that would give advantage. So you, Chris, are going to roll the d6 that he's going to oh, be cool. able to add to it. So go ahead, finesse. You're going to make your roll now, Justin. Um, I'm saying that, and again, usually I don't give you the DC, but you're really just trying to like use a tool you have all the time. Like I'm going to mm -hmm. say it's pretty low. We're going to say a 10 is all that you have to hit. So, yeah. And then for this, I... Same as always, just doing the uh, 2d12s, and now it's added, uh, adding his six and whatever my finesse is. Yes, exactly. Okay. So what, uh, Chris, did you get on your d6? I got a, a one. Okay, sick, sick. Okay, so, so a plus four. one. Okay, so 14 on the die, plus one for my finesse, plus that. So that puts Sadie 16 with fear. Okay. Incredible. All right. So it absolutely works. And you were trying to launch it out as you're doing it. It's clicking down five, four. I don't know why it has a sexy lady voice. Three, two. And as and you do it in that last moment, you almost fail. But we have Tinkerbell right there and pff, kicks it out the window. You see it explode outside of the window. And as you four all halflings in a trench coat style peek over the window you see the royal guard all look up at you and you are gonna have to get out of that tower very fast but excellent work you've done it all right N next one we are closing down so this one kayla is specifically for you your absolutely gorgeous ribbit is walking in the swamp minding her own business to get a ham roll and an orange drink from the local bodega if you know you know <laughs> apparently all of a sudden, this passing ribbit sporting a t-shirt that says hashtag anti on he's an anti-vaxxer, uh, grabs your shoulder and says, you should smile more, sweetheart. What do you do? This is a harder check. Dismantling the patriarchy is never easy. Just, you know. I, but I, I would, I would like give her it. my experience. Fantastic. I love that. I would stand slightly behind him and put my hands gesturing to his ass and i'd say put your foot here <laughs> <laughs> now i don't think that you can give your experience to someone else but i will let you help and roll the d6 for advantage okay 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 yeah. okay. okay fantastic what i would like to do she does like a slow blink when i close this then the other one opens just like that she stares at <laughs> just like that and then she hits him in his in one of his eyes with her tongue Okay. Okay. Fantastic. I love it. I love it. Okay. I am going to say that this is 
Uh, I'm going to put this at a 14 as a DC oh, for no. it. Again, dismantling the patriarchy is tough, okay? You know, but mm -hmm. but anyway, the, all right. So you're going to go ahead and roll. And for this one specifically, I think that's going to be a presence because you're specifically okay. using like a charming maneuver to do it. And you have your experience to add to that as well. So you're mm -hmm. going to roll, yeah. add your mm -hmm. presence, and your experience for the which way is she looking, right? Because you're mm -hmm. using your... Right, so, obviously, yes. So you go ahead and roll your D12s. Steven, you roll your D6. Go ahead. Oh, it's 10 plus 12. That's 22. Plus, right? Steven, what is yours? I got to yeah. roll those two, I, so 24. That is and big enough. And I got enough. it with hope. Yeah, Kay that is a big enough score that I'm not going to describe the situation. Kayla, you get to tell me what happens to this anti-vaxxer telling you to smile. All right, let's see. Okay, so that happens. He um, he falls to the floor and he's just like looking at me and he's like, why? And I'm like, you should smile more. Can I hit him in the other eye? With my sure, tongue? you absolutely can. <laughs> <laughs> Both eyes. Has been hit with the tongue. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> Just knocked wow. out. 10 out of 10 mm -hmm. for dismantling the patriarchy. Okay, Chris, you're foraging for teeth in the forest, and all of a sudden you spot the <laughs> cutest dog you have ever seen in your life, which is pretty tough. Um, but he does look a little distrusting. What do you do? You really want to Angry pet dog, him. a little distressed. But you really want to pet him. I really want to pet him. Um gotta pet that dog i definitely gotta pet the dog because it's a canine i'm into canines figuratively if not literally so i i go in absolutely okay great so you're just reaching right for it all right that's gonna be i'm gonna call it a presence check in this case so go ahead and where this is going to be a straight roll. I'm not going to ask for any help on this roll or anything, and I'm not going to give you the DC. You're just going to roll your hope and fear die and tell me what the find what the report is, okay? All right, let's run it. So <laughs> five with fear. All right. Well, <laughs> fortunately for you, and this is truly part of the plan, I absolutely promise. Fortunately for you, um, the DC was one because this is my campaign. It's a very easy check in my game. All dogs are pettable. Remember, folks, everybody loves in video games when the programmers let you pet the dogs. In Tabletop RPG, your imagination is the code. You can pet every single dog. So no worries at all. You absolutely did it. Okay, um, and then lastly, this is going to be a skill check for me. Um, so, ooh, and actually, I think that the Twitch stream is going to very briefly have gone away, but don't worry. It's it's back. I accidentally hit a thing. Don't even worry about it, but get a load of that dog. Okay, so the last one is going to be a skill check for me. So, I, Rachel, am trying to set up a weekly game session for the new Dagger Heart tabletop role-playing game system with my friends, but it is hard. All of my favorite people are spread out across state lines and adult lives are very busy. Steven, will you adjudicate this role for me? I want you to, you know, go ahead and tell me what you want me to roll and you can set the DC and I will roll for it. Do you think this is a presence check? I would say, I would say it's it's more of a finesse check. Okay, what would you assign my finesse? Uh, you got a pretty decent finesse. I'd probably give you a plus one. Okay, great, absolutely fantastic. Is is anybody gonna help me with this? Surely someone I would, will. I would love to, but I'm trying to think of how. I mean, you're here. That's helping. Yeah, right. yeah there we go. I'm here. One of one of your friends. She came back. Okay. Okay. All right. There's the power of the internet behind you in online you gaming. <laughs> Can I use my experience, Steven, in has super cool friends at a plus two? Yeah. Yeah. I'll let you get that off. Okay. Okay. Sick. All right. All right. Okay. Man, I really hope that this works, guys. This bit is way too long for this to fail. Okay. But I promise I'm doing it real. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> All right, and Kayla's gonna roll the d6. I'm getting oh, a, a plus. I'm glad you told me. What? Real quick, which one is the d6? It's got it's the regular one, the one that the everybody two. knows. Oh, threw me off too. Yeah. I was like, that's six sides. 
<laughs> All right. So I'm getting a plus one from my finesse and a plus two from my has super cool friends experience. I got it. <gasps> oh my gosh. It is a 10 on my hope die and a two on my fear. So that's 12 mm -hmm. plus. You got a six? I got a six. 18, 19, 20, 21. Cool I got 21. <laughs> cool. Does that beat yeah. it? You done you did, did it. it. You did it. it. It was, I had said it at 17. Arbitrary That's number. Hard. Oh my God. Jesus. <laughs> Thank God that the fates were with me. I will take a picture of this and put it in the discord, but that's it. That's everything that I have. So thank you everybody so much. I know we land, ran super wrong, long, not wrong. But wrong. We ran super wrong. <laughs> that's our session zero done. And in the books, we are planning to meet back here next week for our session one of actual play. Thank you everybody who joined us tonight. There are 17 yeah. viewers in chat for a second one. That is not bad. I hope that you roll with hope, happy adventures, and pet that dog. Pet right? that dog. Pet, pet that, that dog. dog. <laughs> Like, all right well thank you all so much i hope you have a good night and bye 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 bye, bye. Thank you, everybody bye. have a good one